People afford what they want to afford. The number one reason people don't buy from you is not money. They say it's money, it's not money. Sure, they'll tell you, tell you that they can't afford it, but in reality, money is not the issue. The real issue is value. They don't see the value in what you offer. Then it's not their fault, it's our fault. The king of high ticket sales. World's highest paid consultant. Media celebrity. Multi-millionaire entrepreneur. Acclaimed TEDx speaker. International best-selling author. Dan Locke. You, you produce results. Produce way more than yeah. what I'm actually charging mm -hmm. the service. Mm -hmm. Because again, you start from day one as, hey, free for free trial. Imagine how much you actually want to charge. Starting out, 25 a month. 2,500 bucks a month, right? Okay, but you charge them nothing to, char to try it out, right? They see, when you want to go from zero to charge 2,500 bucks, doesn't matter how much money you make them. There's a disconnect. Because I got you for free in the first place. Why would I pay $2,500? See, most people, and I'll answer the question, most people, they try to lower the price because they are not good at selling themselves. You see what I'm talking about? Because I can convince them at $2,500, so I'll do it for free. Hopefully, I hope, then they would upgrade. Versus get very good at what you do and being able to communicate the value and just sell at $2,500. You see the difference? It's, it's just an excuse, it's an escape. Because you can't sell their price point, so I'm going to lower my value and try to get that. Goes back to the same dating analogy. I wanna, I'm looking for a meaningful relationship, but you know what? I haven't been out there. Maybe I'm not very attractive, so I'll just go on a bunch of cheap dates, right? Versus make yourself attractive. Make yourself that man or woman other people desire first. Then you can pick and choose. It's all supply and demand. When you have no demand, yeah, I'll do whatever. I'll just Anything is good. I'll, anything comes along, I'll take. But if you can create that demand, now you can pick and choose. You can cherry pick who you want to work with. Right? Make sense? Yeah. Yes. Can you convince them that you can create value by offering money back guarantee if you don't? There's a place and time for money back guarantee. There is a time and place for that. It depends on what you sell and, and what you do. Uh, but from my experience, if you're actually good with the positioning stuff, you don't really need to do that. Mm -hmm. Because it implies the guarantee implies the results versus like I never offer oh you know what come to VG for whatever 30 40 bucks you know I have, if you don't like it I'll give you 40 bucks back you don't like it fuck off <laughs> don't come back I don't care I don't care uh, here's 40 bucks fuck off don't want to see you no more you know what I mean it, that's what I'm talking about it's the whole thing not just one technique yeah so you mentioned two concepts So hold on. So far, so good. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one concept, and they both make sense. I'm just trying to figure out how they make, make can make more sense. Well, no, that's how they can both make sense at the same time. Mm. So one concept yeah. is not try to turn losers into, into winners. winners. Yeah. The second concept is people need but don't see the but I you know the seller fails to convey the value. Yeah. At which point is the seller's fault of not conveying value mm. becomes an attempt to sell, ah, okay. to turn losers. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so what's the difference? So Dan, you were saying you don't want to turn losers into winners, but at the same time, when you want to sell them, we want to communicate value. You know, what's, what's the fine line, right? Now, if they say, well, I just don't see the value, at what point do you say, okay, it's no longer a seller's, mm. a sales guy yeah. problem, you're just a loser. He has to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, it all depends from day one, you know, is it if they, are they qualified at first? So if they're not buying because they don't have the money, 
or they actually haven't seen the value yet. So they could pay you for the trademark. You know they totally have the money, they could afford it. But it's like, I don't know if I want to do the trademark with you, or do I really need to protect my brand? I'm not so sure. So they have the ability, just like your company, to pay it, they just don't want to fucking pay you. So if they have the ability to pay it, but they don't want to fucking pay you, it's our problem. We haven't communicated the value. If they don't even have the ability to pay, to pay it, and here's what we do, most people do. They don't have the ability to pay it, but, well, you know, I guess I can charge a little bit lower. I'll work for three months for free. I'll do this, all this, bend over backwards. I'll, I'll go the extra mile. You try to convert the ones who are not qualified from day one to try to turn them into that. That is hard. Easy to just move on, right? Make sense? Round of applause. Good question. Good question. How many are learning some new stuff, yes? OK. How many are going to charge more when you go back to your business? Very nice. How many are going to tell some clients to fuck off? <laughs> Good. You should. You should. Now, don't say I said it, though. You know? Hey, you know, I just, I just went to see Dan Locke. He asked me to, to tell you to fuck off. <laughs> and here's his social media. You should tag him. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't do that, OK? Don't do that. <laughs> it's not so much about one's ability to pay as it is about their desire to pay their desire to pay for your programs or services. And here's what I noticed. Even people who sometimes they might not have a lot, but I always believe people can always find the money for what they want. That's what I believe. Like I have people who complain, well, you know, oh, I don't have the money to, to buy this and join that. And, and suddenly, you know, I have one guy, I won't name any name, who we're talking about, he's been bugging me, bugging me, bugging me. I think he's definitely not a good fit. At the end, I want to join the IC. I want to join the IC. I want to, but I can't afford it. I want to join the IC. Okay, he's been talking about that for three, four months, right? Next thing I saw him posting on Facebook, I went on this vacation. And I bought this big TV. Huh, interesting. He said, I'm broke. I have no money. Help me out, please. It's interesting. It's never, it's weak. Think about it, in Vancouver, we, this, is, we, this is not Africa here, okay? <laughs> if you live in Vancouver, we all could find, a, if we need the money, we could find the money, yes? yes. That's what I mean. It's the, not the ability to pay, but the desire to pay. Secret number four. Actually, you know what, take two minutes, how long? <laughs> Discuss what I've said, secret number two, secret number three, what it means for you, what I've covered so far. Go ahead, go. Any questions with what we've covered so far? Any, any questions you want to ask me before I move on to the next lesson? Or maybe even a aha moment. Kevin, go to the mic. Yeah, you have a question, go to the mic. We'll, we'll take a couple of questions. Or something you're not sure of, or something you're confused, or even just aha, something that hits you. Oh my God, I didn't know that before. Go ahead. I'll uh, start off with the question. I've got a lot of ahas for sure. Yeah. Yeah, my question is when you say, because I, I believe I have value, I demonstrated results for people and now when it comes to just closing the deal it just seems like it's a communication when we say communication is it sort of like just selling or you know positioning or mm. is that is that areas that aspect of communication I'm gonna about? have one of my mentees ask that uh, answer that Klaus you can answer that right can you do that sure. okay I'm on applause So that I could sit back and just sip some tea. Go ahead. So the question is, is I, am I just talking about selling or am I talking about positioning? Like what the hell am I talking about here? It's both. Hmm. It's both. So for sure like um, positioning helps a lot. If you are properly positioned like that, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to sell really that much. Yeah. So basically you are not chasing clients. Clients come to you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're, you aren't positioned properly in the marketplace, then yes, you have to be a very good salesman. Mm -hmm. Now also, but the way that we sell high tickets, how is it different from typical traditional sales? Yeah, it's, it's actually very interesting. So, you know, the traditional sales is like, you know, excited guys, it's like Grand Cardone type salesman, like, you know, hard clothes, assumptive, you know, clothes, etc. But I mean, what Dan teaches is like, he uses this concept of like, well, it's a, totally, it's a totally different model. It's a very comprehensive, but I mean, it's a totally, um, yeah, just totally, hard to explain, but I mean, totally different model from 
you know, the traditional model. So it's kind of like um, we don't really care, or that's at least the goal, to not care about, you know, or whether their client wants to become, uh, or prospect wants to become a client, because they have the problem. Like we don't care if they become a client or not, because yeah. they actually have the problem. So we don't have to chase them, they should chase us, and kind of we, we should qualify them, you know, whether they are actually a good fit or not. That's so. right, that's right. Very good, well said. Jenna? Let me answer that question again. Um, yes. So positioning and sales, right? Like, um, actually, the um, sales is a process. So you have to position, and you also have to close the sales by selling, right? So if you position yourself well, you don't have to do like much of the selling part to close the deal. You see what I mean? Yeah. But if you don't position yourself well, then you have to do like hard selling to be able to close. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well said. Well <laughs> And Calvin, just to add to a point like what, with what Klaus said, um, well, what I learned from Dan, like the market isn't gonna buy from somebody who's maybe young, inexperienced, you know, maybe hasn't gotten that much work with clients. So it's kind of key to kind of position yourself as that already that go-to expert, that kind of leading authority figure, even though if you don't have that, I guess, experience yet, but to still kind of position yourself as that, because that's well, the type of clientele you're dealing with, that's who they want to see. Well, that's yeah. what Dan said, people are buying for like the value or the outcome they want to receive. So just to add to what Klaus said. Okay. Round of applause. Well done. John? My takeaway is more uh, just general like... Yeah. Just turn it down, that's good. Yeah. Right. Mine just like uh, more of a life and a business one. It was like uh, something that like Jim Rohn said where he's like, um, your income doesn't, uh, self-development and your income is pretty closely related, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, more I noticed, like, your model of thinking, the way you move, the way you think, behaviors, there's way different than most poor people. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's that, that's what's making the difference. It seems like, like you're, the, you're the client that you attract, right? Yeah. Uh, that, that stuff, it was like, that it comes more down to the intangibles than just, like, the philosophy here is pretty simple, right? It's more yeah. like the person you are. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it it's who you to. are. Th like, this stuff won't work if you are not a person of value. It just will not work. It will fail so fast. It will not work. It has to start with that. You actually deliver value, tremendous value to the marketplace, and you just lack those techniques on how to communicate that, this would work. But if you actually don't, you're selling shady stuff, I'm not saying you, like other people, if you, if you sell shady stuff and you have questionable expertise, this will not work. It would, it would backfire so fast. Yes, Ali, come. Uh, you guys have a lot to say, it's good. A round of applause. A round of applause. Okay. Actually, I wanted to share one of those aha moments. Aha moment, yeah. uh, regarding the secret number two, you're selling the value, not the dollar. Yes. You know, thanks to Dan, that's what happened exactly to me like two months ago. Um, usually what we do, we provide maintenance packages to the sites for like $1,000 per month. Mm. Then we have a client came to us and asked, okay, you know what, I have done three websites, Canadian, US, and one which is combination of all other products. Mm -hmm. Could you make sure this one gonna charge Canadian dollar, this one charge US, US dollar, dollar, because somehow it's messed up. Yep. Then I started writing a proposal and give it to them. And meanwhile, I said, okay, you know what, let's get Dan's idea. How does it work? Dan, can you tell me if it's a good proposal? <laughs> He's laughing. I'm not gonna say what he told me, but he said no. Yeah, with some <laughs> F, some F word, some F bomb in the email. Yeah. And he just told me, "You're gonna just write one sentence as a proposal to this guy. I'm gonna increase your sales by 65 percent, and I'm gonna give you this much extra percent clients." visiting your website, and I will charge $25,000. Yeah. I couldn't believe they're gonna say yes. Only one sentence instead of the whole proposal. How long was the proposal? <laughs> it was like two pages, I yeah. wrote three pages. 
Yeah, it's, it's long. That's because long. I gotta do this and I gotta do that. I gotta merge the site and I gotta install this <laughs> one. Then I gotta take this one out and I gotta add advertisements. Freak them off. I just gotta increase your revenue and I gotta get clients to your site. I did it. I sent it to them. I said, you know what? I gotta test it. I, got, I know I gotta lose this client, but I gotta test it. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what was the answer? The yeah. answer was, I'm going to give you $8,000 plus $2,000 per month and 10% of the sales of the site if you can do it. Mm. Thanks to that. No applause. <laughs> and, and that's why people, you know, they buy the drill. They don't want a drill. They want a hole. You have to know what holes do they want. Nobody cares about oh, your migration, U.S. dollars, currency, and, and my product display, description, and, and title tags. All that is nice. It's a mean to an end. What's the outcome they want? I want to increase my sales percentage by X. Well, let's just sell them that. Nobody cares about Kevin, right? Nobody cares about Facebook posts. Nobody cares about that. Yeah. How much money are you going to make me? That's it. Yeah. If you go a little bit deeper, what are you going to do with that money? You've got to go deep. You've got to go deep. Hi, this is Dan Locke. Welcome to Dan Locke TV. I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now you might ask, why should I? Every week, I'll post two new videos, all focusing on helping you becoming a better entrepreneur. You will be challenged, and you will be inspired, and you will be motivated. More importantly, you'll get practical ideas and strategies that will take your business to the next level. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button, Turn on the notification so you don't miss out on a single episode. I promise you, you won't regret it.